Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Jump and today I thought we would have another look at uh, this thing here. Now, uh, you cast your minds back a very, very long time, and I do mean probably a couple of years. Um, I uh, looked at this um, old Macintosh LC and um, we basically got the base unit here booting up. Um, we had to rebuild the power supply in it. But we couldn't get anything on the screen because um, of a monitor issue and it's not been touched since to be honest so it's still got the same uh, monitor issue and that's what I thought we'd have a look at seeing if we can um, resolve today in this video so I'll just fire the thing up so you can see what it's actually doing we'll switch the monitor on first I mean, it does actually power up, it is getting power to it but when it powers up we get this rather out of focus wavy raster there that definitely doesn't look very nice, it's overly bright We've got this incredibly high brightness uh, raster line, and like I say, it's all wavy, it's out of focus. We've got the three RGB colours showing up in the background. Did we switch the computer on? See, the computer does react, the screen does react to the computer, but as you can see, it doesn't display anything, that's all you get. Now, we don't know whether the computer is actually booting up into its OS, but um, as soon as we get the Happy Mac beep, we should be at least getting something laudable on screen. And obviously we're not getting anything um, anything like that at all. So what, what I think we'll do is we'll uh, we'll power it down, we'll disconnect that, and we'll get the um, we'll get the keyboard and the computer and everything away, and we'll um, crack into this um, monitor and see what we can do with it. I'm suspecting like the power supply is basically, excuse me, suffering from um, bad capacitors. Uh, these are starting to fail quite uh, readily now, so. Um, we're back in a sec when I've got um, all the rest of the stuff squirreled away and we can um, start cracking into the actual um, the actual monitor. Okay, here we are with everything squirreled away and we've just got the uh, monitor to work on. And as you can see, I've got everything unplugged. So it's all unplugged, but I do have the IEC for it um, here on the ready because we may be needing that um, sometime quite soon anyway. Just depending on what we find inside. So let's go ahead and uh, let's get this thing cracked open. Ah, so we've got a couple of screws down here. So let's uh, find the screwdriver. There it is, rolling around on the floor. I will confess, I don't think I've been in one of these monitors before. So we will discover how we get inside it. That's one of them out. Soldering iron, and I will need that shortly. Right, so that's two out from the bottom. That's hinging up now. So, there doesn't seem to be anything up here, um, which is what I find most odd. Does it just snap, snap off now? I don't know. Let's have a. I've just got some. Snap to something to get the top off. This is really, really odd. It pulls up all around here. They're not hidden a screw behind something here, have they? There's a screw hidden behind this label. Ah, 
think that's just the pressing mark from the plastic. Anyway, bear with me. I'll be back as soon as I've got the um, back off this thing. I'm sorry I stopped the camera there because literally as soon as I stopped the camera, I just literally went round it like that with this. Give it a squeeze and uh, pop. Off it come. So, let's, uh, let's get this case off. absolutely terrified working around uh, monitors. Uh, I'm not. Um, there's not a huge amount in here that can really kill you. There's certain things that can um, hold a charge. Um, that's the main one there which is the um, high, high tension cable there. Um, behind there, basically the tube acts as a capacitor and it stores the charge and it's uh, behind that. Uh, to make everything safe really we just need to discharge that there. <coughs> There are some other um, high voltage um, electron electrolytic capacitors on here, but um, they should have a bleed resistor on them and we can test that they're dead anyway. So they don't really concern me. The only thing that's a slight concern is that. It looks like we can unplug the scan coil so we don't have to worry about getting them off the screen or anything. And uh, looks like we can get the PCB out fairly easily. I think it's going to be a case of seeing if we can find out where the um, where the fault is with it. So now I've got a feeling it may have um, bad capacitor disease because the power supply in the Mac certainly did have. And these don't go physically bulgy or anything; they just seem to um, leak electrolyte. You can tell fairly soon anyway when you start desoldering because you get that horrible um, bad fishy smell that we all uh, know and love. Anyway, I think the first thing we need to do is get that um, CRT discharged so we can um, disconnect the high voltage side there and we can slide the chassis out and actually work on it safely. So what we're going to do, first of all, we'll switch the um, switch that socket off I've got on the wall. So I've got an IEC lead plugged into it, but the IEC lead is plugged into the wall but it's switched off. And we're going to plug this into the... Um, into the back of the monitor. That's going to provide a good ground for us because what we need for doing, to do this is a good ground. We also need a good sturdy screwdriver. Like that one. Oops, something with a decent well insulated handle. I mean if you had one with um, insulation a bit further down there that's more the better but I'm confident using this. I'm quite happy to use this one. Next thing we need is a, uh, a crocodile clip like that. And all we need to do is click one side of it to a, um, a good ground on the chassis. So we've got this metal bit on the back of the chassis here. We can use that. So we need to clip that on there and get a really good ground on it like that. The other side of it we want to get onto the screwdriver like that. Then all we need to do is basically we go down the back of that rubber there and we touch the um, connection in there, it's the anode in there and we should hear a little um, crack or a little snap if there's any um, charge left in this tube and um, that will basically just dissipate any charge so we can, we're safe to then remove that, we're safe to touch it and we're not going to um, risk getting a shock off it so we'll do that now we'll get a little, hopefully, I mean sometimes they discharge really quickly but hopefully we'll get a little bit of a snap or a um, pop off it when we do this just gently ease that down there Then we're going to get a snap, a snap or a pop off this one. No, nope. if you can hear that, I'm actually touching the uh, metal inside, so that is um, nicely discharged. So we've not even got. A, I actually prefer to get a slight little snap or a crack, a snap or a pop off it, because at least you know definite for sure that you've got a um, definitely discharged it. Then, but um, I think we've got a good enough connection there. Let's just uh, turn this back. 
Yeah, I'm right in there on the uh, metal work and there's nothing at all. I think we can call that um, tube nicely discharged. Now hopefully I've got some, yeah, fine long nose pliers just help for this next step. Because what you need to do is basically you need to pinch a little bit of metal inside there together. Now, what I need is something I can just pull this back with. Like that. And we can go in with these. Let's get hold of that metal work. Just pinch it in and pull it out. There we go. That's disconnected. That's completely safe now. And even just be on the absolute safe side, you can just... There we go. There is no charge on that CRT whatsoever. And that's a transformer. So that can't produce any um, actual voltage unless you induce a current in the circuit. So there's no way you can get a shock off that with no power connected to the actual set. So this is now safe, completely safe to work on. Right, so next thing we're going to do is... Um, I think we'll disconnect the scan coils and then we can get the uh, main board out from the um, rest of the chassis. But, and also we can um, unplug this IEC lead now because like I said it's now safe. We'll unplug the scan coils. Come on. They are really tight in there. So we can get it with a screwdriver. Dear me, they're tight. Just moved up a little bit on one side then. You can get in on the other side and just leave that up. Dear me. They don't want to come out. They've got to come out, but uh, they don't want to. Come on out you come. Ah, there we go. Starting to come free now. There we go. That's the scan coils disconnected. Mm, no, we've not done any damage, thank God. Right, we can unplug that little power LED there. Get that out of the way. But also we need to disconnect to be able to get this, uh, that goes to that board there, so we're not too interested in that. It's this main board underneath that we're really looking at getting out. I have to disconnect that there, and that should be it. We should be able to um, release some screws here and slide that main board out of the actual chassis. Let's undo that one there. I'll put that screw back in because that holds that um, holds the rest of that together. take that one out and do the same there. Just to put these earths and these grounds back or else um, can cause issues but for now I said we just want to take this um, chassis out so we can actually have a look at it and find out what's uh, going on with it. So pound to the penny it's, um, it's going to be um, capacitor related. on that side. Ah, it's this, um, I think it's this shield around the um, <coughs> line output transformer which is causing the issue. Let's see if we can free that off. Ok, 
Okay. Hopefully, we'll let them uh, get us. Nope. Ah, we're coming for us now. I do have to actually remove this board from the um, CRT. The other side's enough clearance to actually get the thing off. Hold this out. It's, it's held on with that bloody glue stuff, that uh, sealant that they love sticking on everything. Pull it up, will that give us enough clearance? No, it hits the line output transformer. Damn. I hate this stuff. We really gummed it on there. Because we could look at um, changing some of the capacitors in situ. It's not ideal, but I'm worried if I try and take that off there, I'm going to actually break it. It's that well um, stuck on. It's literally as though the two have become one. That's really annoying. Um, got any other options? without breaking it. I could try and just ease it past one of these clips on one side and then get it to walk out that way. That might be a possibility. Let's get that off there. sound good. Right. This is not the recommended way of removing it, but like I said, I can't see another way I can get it out. With that, um, with that in situ at the moment, Try taking this more shielding off. And that's got some capacitors in it which um, I think may be suspect as well, so that's not going to help. Yeah, well done, Apple, you really make good serviceability. So, your iPhones is nothing new. computers are that bad, it's just uh, it doesn't be like again having the monitor prepared. Right, that gives us a bit more room. Now can we sneak that back and swing the board out that way? Let's have a look. No, because we're hitting, we're still hitting that board in there. Try doing 
the opposite and taking this side out first. Okay. And just go up a tiny little bit more. We might be able to winkle that out. There we go. That's winkled. There's a question about getting a bloody thing back in here, but I need to disconnect that. Disconnect that. Right, now hopefully that's everything. I can see two wires which I don't think I can disconnect there. Let's uh, see how far we can go now anyway. up there which is now freight oh and another one I haven't spotted which is over there which hopefully we can just pop out and stand where you really need to get this um, neck board off and that's that freight well, unfortunately we can't disconnect them two because it goes to the high tension and it's all glued in with that horrible stuff so I think we may end up having to work on it like this which isn't ideal but uh, what can you do and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, do the old soldering iron test and uh, run the soldering iron round near any suspect capacitors and have a smell and see what I can smell smell there. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, there we go, that's one. It smells it's not like it's this um, Nichicon there that's um, gone up. Well, that is definitely, definitely faulty. It's 160 volts at 82 UF. Let's have, a, um, let's have another little whiff around this. this is the, I think this is the main smoother. No smell there. This is a really uh, unscientific way of testing for leaky caps, but it does actually work. No smell there. Let's have a... Uh, I've already done round here, haven't we? But let's have a... Nope, no smell there. Just seems to be around here. Let's have a, uh, oh god, yeah, oh yeah, oh dear. So uh, I think this is um, this is our suspect area here. It's um, probably quite polluted the board. What I think we're going to have to do is strip some of the components off around this area here give the board a really good clean down and then um, obviously replace these capacitors. Um, I will go around the rest of the board as well and um, do a little bit more spot um, spot smelling but I think this is definitely our uh, culprit area here where um, which is causing the um, issues with the uh, monitor so uh, yeah I will be back very very shortly when I've um, taking a few of these capacitors, well I, what I need to do is I need to find out where I've got these values in stock and then um, we can whip them out, we can give this um, area a clean round 
and we can um, take it from there. So back again very, very shortly. Okay, well I've checked my um, capacitor stock. And at the moment, the only thing I've got in is um, a two, um, 2200 at 16 volts, uh, which will replace this 2200 at 6 volts. I haven't got a 2200 at 35. And I haven't got a one. I um, I haven't got a um, 82 volts at 106. Uh, sorry, 82 UF at 160 volts either. Uh, so what I will do is um, I'll swap this one out for now because, like I said, this one I think is the probably the worst. And uh, we'll take it from there. We'll take the other ones out and we'll te at least test them. But we need to clean the crud off. The this is terrible because the uh, solder's not even flowing. It's that bad. Oh, come out you sod. Doesn't it help that I can't get the um, board in a really comfortable position with having it permanently attached to the rest of the, uh, the computer, but never mind, we'll get it. I think we'll have to try the old sucker. I was hoping I could rock it out, but it's not looking like it's going to, uh, it's going to play ball. Let's try this one first. Flux, the uh, sorry, the uh, electrolyte has absolutely ruined the old solder. It's horrible. That's a nice new solder to flow on there, and hopefully we can get the thing out. Oops. Let's give that a try. Okay, that's looking much better. Perhaps with a little bit of uh, persuasion now it'll come out. There we go. That legs out. Yes, it's pretty much free, it's just the damn um, it's just this damn uh, gluey stuff holding it in the hole now. So let's uh, give it a I've got to move some of these components out so I can actually break the thing free. This is stuff is horrible. Bloody hell. Look at that. You see the liquid on the bottom of there? That's how uh, how leaky that was. And it's all over the board. We are going to have to clean the board. Let's get some uh, let's get some isopropyl uh, cotton bud and we'll see what we can do with the board. Yeah, it's, I don't know if you can see how well you can see that on the uh, camera. You can see this here. It's. Let me see if I can zoom in. Let's see if you can see it a bit better. Oops. You look at this. Uh, this part here. You can see all the uh, electrolyte and stuff which is still on the board. give this a good clean, get all this off the board because um, it's conductive basically. And this could be causing all our, well, a lot of our problems. Obviously the fact that the uh, capacitor is no good anymore. It certainly won't be um, on its correct capacitance with all that electrolyte leaking out of it. There we go, that's much better. You can see there, that's all the uh, old electrolyte that's leaked out of that thing. We'll get the new, uh, the new capacitor in there. When I say new, it's not actually a brand new one, but uh, it's a good one. It'll do for, um, it'll do for in here. Let's stick that in like that. Just 
bend the legs ever so slightly to hold them in position and just hope that this is going to solder all right. <coughs> Let's just get you over to where it's uh, where the action's happening. But you can see where I am there. So we've got the new component through the uh, through the board. Not my neatest of um, solder jobs that because uh, I hate soldering when it's um, on an angle like that, it's never perfect but I can't really bend the um, board round that much to get it, uh, get it much better, as well, long as it's solid it's good, I'll just snip the excess of them off, there we go, and we'll give that a little bit of a clean on that side. I think this is all um, leaked electrolyte all over the board. Wow, it's really actually damaged the board quite a lot. That's looking a lot, uh, a lot better now. Let's get in there with that screwdriver. There's a little bit in there. There we are. That's it. That's cleared away. So we've got to change them other two um, capacitors round here. Like I said, there's a um, 220 UF. Uh, sorry, 2200 UF at 35 volts and there's a um, 63 UF at 160 volts which I'm going to have to find. So I'm probably going to call this um, call this part one of this and um, we'll come back when I've found some more um, capacitors and we'll stick some more capacitors in it. We'll go through and we'll test um, the rest of the capacitors on the board. We'll um, perhaps try and see whether we can get this um, let me get you, zoom you out see whether it is going to be feasible to get the um, top board off there because it would make reassembling much easier but I don't want to risk forcing it and damaging the neck or damaging any of the um, actual socket round there because that would be a uh, game over for this monitor so um, like I said I'm going to leave it there for now I hope you enjoy this little foray into a um, rather cheap apple um, colour monitor so um, for now thanks for watching and goodbye <laughs>